Now this is Column's house where we spent many pleasant days when we were little boys. I would be able to date the first time I came here. It was in February for Kala's birthday, I think it his 10th birthday, which would have been in 1952, uh, if I remember correctly. But I certainly remember the first time I came and been very, very well looked after. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Sandy, come in. Can you? Uh, in, in, uh, <laughs> Smith, come in first, then I'll all follow. All right, her. all right. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Very well. Hi, Callum. Hello, hello. Welcome home again. <laughs> come in, Sandy. <laughs> I haven't seen you in here before. Quick, like at the stairs. You know. How are you doing, boy? <laughs> all the better of seeing you, Callum. How are you? And you? Very well. Sit down. <laughs> Yes, I'll take this here. Yeah, there's got a new folder ah. box for things. We're obviously fighting that day, <laughs> and you encourage us to call him Kenny something something, which I will not repeat in front <laughs> of the ladies. <laughs> Surely no. Oh, yeah. oh, we, we were just rough ten oh, year old. Oh, sure. that's so. And Shem. Shem, still, a go, still on the I go. I still see him. Was he a plasterfield boy? He was, he was. I thought that. He stays down in Strange now and he lost his wife tragically maybe ten or more years ago. Shem? Uh-huh. Lo- I was the wrong man. This is Shem, John- as the guy I mean, he hasn't lost his wife. Ah. He's a member of the lodge as well. Yes. This one, right, right. Well, he hasn't lost his wife. John MacLeod or John MacDonald? MacDonald it was, yeah. Right? No, his wife is a sister of Flora, the hairdresser. Anne. Aye. Ah, no, Shem, Shem, no. Yeah, no, we had to look after him and not be bad to him. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> and because he had a stammer. That was right, yeah. But uh, we were down at uh, Pitlochry. No, uh, Blair Athol it uh-huh. was. And we came into Pitlochry for the day and there was the first time I'd ever seen a cafeteria self-service. Uh-huh. And we all queued up and we were in our kilts uh-huh. and we were as spatula as could be. <laughs> and we went up to the payout, the checkout, and Big Sambo had not got his money in his kilt in his, his sporran. He lifted up his kilt oh. and into his un- underpants where he kept his wallet. <laughs> yes, and the crowd, everyone in the shop was pointing to the right. kilt. Away oh, the well done. So this, there's only 12 of us, enough for a football team. And uh, I was on fatigue this day. I was chief cook and all that, and uh, two runabouts to do the carrying for me. And uh, anyway, I'd cooked this. My father had put over a box of herring, of uh, kippered herring. Uh-huh. And, oh, yeah, they were on the big Dixies, you know, the lids, uh-huh. the big oval lids, and they were frying the herring there, frying the, the, the um, kippers. And I had noticed there was a piece of wood with a toilet roll hanging from it, and this was not being used, and there was custard to have for us to have for pudding. And I got a hold of a packet of chocolate-flavoured laxatives, uh-huh. and I mixed them with the custard. And, uh, of course, the kippers were ready and the potatoes were ready and everyone, anyone wants seconds? And they had never heard of seconds before. Down they came and there were bones still in their mouth, more more kippers. And uh, then it came to the laxative custard. Uh-huh. S- semolina it was, semolina. Now, it was post, 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 and a sacking round it uh-huh. and a trench with you stood a, a, a stride that, trench to go to the toilet. Well, the next thing I knew, there was a rush and they were all grabbing the toilet roll. Uh-huh. And the last one up was Banksy. Well, if he did, he fell in and they still couldn't stop. Uh-huh. And we had to take him out on the end of a rope uh-huh. and we took him down the beach to the shore and <laughs> held him in the water. Until, what a state he was in. Oh. And then we remembered each other right away. And uh, he says, you know, you're one of the first in Plasterville, I says. I was the third house to, to be occupied. 
uh, Faulkner, Evelyn Campbell's mother, Ev you know the beautiful singer, singer. Evelyn Campbell. The widow of Dr. C Campbell who practised in locks at right. bus. Yes. His widow stayed next door. Oh, did she? Be before Cardiff came, aye. And then we were here. That's uh, the, the mother of Evelyn, the singer. The singer, that's right. Oh, I didn't oh, know yes. that. She, she was terribly bad with arthritis. And she used to have a oval oven dish, you know, the enamel dish. And she used to fill it with molten be uh, wax, wax. Yes, okay, uh, and put her hands in it, you see. And <laughs> I used to be fascinated. And she would take me over so that I could peel the wax off. <laughs> after it had done its work. And I thought this was absolutely okay. fascinating. And she was yeah. a wonderful woman to talk to, you know. Uh -huh. She would keep your interest for hours. But I didn't know Evelyn's mother stayed there. Uh -huh. Yes. 